Hello everyone and welcome to the first tutorial which will focus on sparsity and in particular we will talk about what is sparsity, why do we need this and how it is related to the link between neuroscience and AI. So I'm Noga, I'm a PhD candidate at Johns Hopkins University working with Dr. Adam Charles where I develop computational and mathematical tools to study high dimensional neural data. And I'm very excited about the link between neuroscience and AI, and I'm very happy to be part of this course. So what is sparsity? Basically in real world scenarios, we often observe dense signals, basically some signals that present a lot of non-zero values. As you can see here, in addition to dense signals, we often also observe sparse signals or real signals. What are sparse signals. So signals that include a lot of zero values. So when you compare this to uh, signals, you can see that in this case, the lower values were nullified, basically uh, received a new zero values, while the signal maintained the higher values, which created sparsity. So why do we need sparsity? Basically, when we think about neuro and AI, and in particular, the brain, let's assume that we add dense connectivity pattern in the brain. It will be very inefficient. I mean, if we add a connection between any pair of possible neurons, it would require a lot of memory, a lot of uh, computation time, a very inefficient computation that doesn't align with how we assume the brain works. So in contrast, we believe that there is some sparse connectivity pattern within the brain. Particularly, some neurons are connected to other neurons, while other neurons are not connected to some other neurons, which creates an overall sparse connectivity pattern, which can be either structural or functional. In addition to sparse connectivity, we also have sparse activity. Basically, we can look on the temporal activity of specific neurons. The temporal activity patterns present sparse activation patterns. Basically, there are some periods where some neurons barely fire, okay, basically present zero-ish activity, in contrast to some other periods where the neuron fire. When we compare different neurons, we may see different sparsity patterns, basically different neurons may fire in different time points and thus creating an overall sparse activity pattern over the brain. So we will see the stems sparse connectivity and sparse activity throughout the tutorial. In addition, when you think about this course, this course focuses on neuro-AI, both neuroscience and AI. So we talked about the advantages of as sparsity in neuroscience, but why do we need sparsity in AI and how it is related to neuroscience? So as we saw that there is sparsity in the brain, maybe also applying sparsity to artificial systems can be helpful. And indeed, when we think, or based on previous work, looking on applying sparsity to deep networks, we saw that there are a lot of advantages. In particular, does include simplifying the models and improving the accuracy. It also includes reducing the computational costs and uh, improving our generalization ability through regularization. In addition, it contributes to lower memory usage and basically mimics the natural efficiency that we see in brain computation. So we talked about body sparsity, why do we need sparsity? And throughout this tutorial, we will also talk about sparsity in real life. We will uh, deal with multiple applications and advantages of sparsity in real life. We will focus on sparsity and neuroscience, basically how sparsity is related to neuroscience. And lastly, we will talk about how applying sparsity can be helpful to discover the hidden latent components of images or signals and how it is related to the processing in the brain and particularly in V1, the primary visual cortex. 
So, in addition to the advantages, why, what, we need some way to somehow measure sparsity. So there are a lot of different options to measure sparsity. We will not cover everything, but in this tutorial, we will focus on three. The first one is the L0 pseudonym. The L0 pseudonym basically captures how many non-zero elements a signal includes. So for instance, here we have 30 non-zero elements, here we have 16, and this signal is of course sparser. However, L0 is very hard to work with, and that's why we have L1, the L1 norm, as an approximation of the L0 pseudonym. The L1 norm is basically the sum of absolute values of a signal, and because it's convex, it's much easier to work with. In addition, we have the kurtosis, where the kurtosis basically captures how long the tail of the distributions are. So if we look on the distribution on the signal, um, if we see a very long tail, it means high kurtosis and higher sparsity. And we calculate the kurtosis for the first central moment of the distribution, standardized by the standard deviation. So I'm very excited about the link between neuroscience and AI, and I hope that you are as well. So let's start.